Hello and welcome to SolidWorks Tutorials. In this video, I'm going to walk you through a step-by-step -step process in creating assemblies. To create an assembly, we need to have number of parts. In this video, I'm going to explain about standard mates in SolidWorks. In future videos, I'm going to talk about the other types of mates we have in SolidWorks. But for now, let us have a look at standard mates. So I have three different parts opened in SOLIDWORKS. The first one is motor. The second one is a motor clamp. And the third one is a wheel. So I'm going to create an assembly using these three parts. And I'm going to create some mates between the parts. To create an assembly, you need to have an assembly file open or a template of assembly. For now, we are in part template or part file. You can create a new assembly file or you can make an assembly file from a part. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an assembly from a part. For that, I'm going to go back to motor. You can do it with any part, but now I just want to start with motor. So here we have the motor. I'm going to click on file and you can see this make assembly from part option here click on that now solidworks is asking us to create a new document which is an assembly file document so i'm going to click ok this takes us into assembly template and here we have design canvas and on the left side you can see this dialog box we have a message here which says select a component to insert then place it in the graphics area or hit okay to locate it at the origin so i want to start with motor so the first component which i'm going to select is motor and i want this motor on the design canvas and you can see these three files here because these three files are currently open in solidworks which is why you can see them in the recent documents which are opened or as you can see it meant it is mentioned as open documents so I want this motor at the origin so I'm going to click just OK but if you want to place motor somewhere else or if you want to place the part somewhere else on the design canvas you can always do it by placing the cursor at that location and by simply clicking. For now I'm going to click OK so the motor goes on to origin point. Always make sure to change the condition of the part to float. So whenever you insert a new component, the first component is always fixed condition. So you need to change that into float condition. Right now, this part is in fixed condition as this is the first component in the assembly. So I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to change it to float. Now it is in float condition and it can be used for mating. So I'm going to create a mate between the motor and its respective plane. So I'm going to select mate here and here under entities to mate, I want to select this face of the motor and I want to select top. So I want this face of the motor to be coincident to the top plane, but SOLIDWORKS can automatically detect the possibility of mating. So in this case, it detected the there is a possibility of coincident mate between this face and top plane we also have a possibility of parallel mate perpendicular mate but we don't have any chance of creating a concentric mate and tangent mate which is why these two mates are disabled but these three mates are possible also these three options are possible which is lock which is giving the distance and here we have the angle so first i'm going to show you all this first i'm going to keep this mate as coincident and i'm going to click ok now this face is coincident to top plane now i want to change the condition of this mate so i'm going to right click here that is the recent mate and i want to delete that or instead if you want to edit the mate close this mate dialog box here and you can see mates here and 
there is a drop down so click on this drop down or extend the menu and here you can see the first mate we have which is coincident mate right click on coincident mate and select this option which says edit feature now it takes you back into mate dialog box and here instead of coincident i'm going to select parallel so this face is parallel to top plane and i'm going to click ok it doesn't change anything because coincident and parallel are almost the same if the if you are not moving the component so i'm going to go back and uh, i want to edit this mate and change it to perpendicular now we can see that this face has become perpendicular to the top plane and uh, if I go back to coincident or if I give a distance and click OK, you can see that there is a distance of 50 mm or whatever the distance I gave between the top plane and the face. So I'm going to go back to that feature and I'm going to quickly edit that. Sorry, it's, it is 90 mm. So I want to disable this and I'm going to click on coincident here. So when I selected this option, it changed from coincident into the distance mating. This time I want to give it an angle. So here i want to give an angle as 45 degrees as you can see there is a distance there is an angle of 45 degrees between the top plane and this body as you can see there is an angle of 45 degrees between this face and the top plane we can always flip the dimension so it just changes the direction you can also change the alignment so I'm gonna close this and I'm gonna make it coincident again coincident okay so now I just want to go back to trimetric view so here we have coincident I think we need to change something here so here as you can see i changed the alignment which is why you can see a shadow on top but we want the shadow at the bottom so okay so this motor is the face this face of the motor is coincident to the top plane so we are done with the first meeting which we need to do now i just want to insert another part so the second part which i want to insert is motor clamp so i'm going to select motor clamp and i want to place it over here this time we have a mate between this hole and this hub or the shaft of the motor in order to create a mate between these two parts we need to select the appropriate locations to create the mate so i'm going to click on mate here and as i already told you we need to have a mate between this hole and the shaft or this hub of the motor first we need to select any entity from this hole it can be this circle it can be this circle or it can be this face inside the hole so i'm going to select this face and i want to select this circle or this circle or the cylinder which is the shaft to create the mate if you select this threads here it is going to change into mechanical type of mating which we don't need right now so i'm going to select the shaft so when I selected shaft, SolidWorks automatically detected that there is a possibility of concentric mate here. Also, we have a possibility of tangential mate because these are circular 
objects so we can always have a tangential mate here but for now i'm going to stick to concentric mate and i'm going to click on ok so when there is a concentric mate between two objects if you drag this one up and down you can see that it is always concentric to the shaft of the motor as you can see it is not changing the direction of this motor or the angle of this motor because this motor is in mate with the top plane the next mate we need to have is a mate between this face and this face so this face of the motor clamp is to be coincidental to this face of the uh, gear hub in the motor so i'm not going to mate this time i want to select this face of the motor clamp and i want to select this face of the gear box and it is automatically selected as coincident so i'm going to click ok now we have proper meeting between the motor clamp and the motor now i just want to insert the third component which is the wheel so i'm going to go to insert and i'm going to select wheel this time and i want to insert it over here as you can see we have a hub and we need to mate the inside surface of this hub to this shaft and as you can see these are circular cross sections we have a cylindrical object here which is a shaft and we have a cylindrical hole so we need to mate these two in order to do that i'm going to select mate again this time i'm going to select this shaft and i'm going to select this inner face as you can see it is in concentric condition so i'm going to click on ok now if i just move this wheel up and down you can see it is always concentric to the shaft but we need to create another mate that is a mate between this face and this face so most of the times these two faces are not coincidental to each other but we will see a very little diff distance between these two so i'm going to give some distance between these two so this is going to be something like 5 mm i would say and i'm going to click on ok as you can see we have a distance of 5 mm between this face and this face i'm going to click on ok and i'm going to go back to trimetric view I can do the same to this other hole so I'm gonna insert motor mate I want to select this shaft and this inner face and it is concentric also I want to select this face and this face okay now they are coincidental to each other i want to insert another wheel mate i want to select this inner face and i want to select this shaft they are concentric to each other okay and i just want to move this and select this face of the wheel and this face of the motor and i'm going to give a distance as 5 mm okay and i want to close this mate dialog box and go back to trimetric view
So when I go back to trimetric view, you can see that there is a proper mate between these three different components. So in this tutorial, we discussed the coincident mates, parallel, perpendicular mates. I'm going to talk more about tangential mates in a different video. Or you can simply practice them out using the same components we have here. I'm going to include the link for these three parts in the description below. You can download the parts and you can practice it by yourself. In coming videos, we are going to explore more about mechanical standard mates and advanced mates we have in SOLIDWORKS. Till then, stay tuned to the channel. Take care. Bye-bye.